in the project being celebrated there, as you can see, in what can only be described as a show for the opening uh, ceremony, dancers and uh, various uh, displays. Uh been watched by the likes of Angela Merkel, uh, the Swiss president and other leaders who will be the first passengers on the passenger and freight train heading both north and south through the Alps. Let's just listen in and watch the fun. Well, if you just joined us, uh, you're, watching in, uh, you're watching the opening ceremony of the world's longest and deepest rail tunnel under the Swiss Alps. It's uh, officially been opened. Uh, this spectacle um, uh, very much uh, showing how proud the Swiss are of the tunnel, despite the rising costs uh, of over $12 billion. Uh, the show's been watched by the Swiss federal president, uh, the German Chancellor Angela Merkel is there, as is Francois Hollande of France, the Italian uh, Prime Minister is there as well, the Austrian Chancellor, along with the European Commission Chief Jean-Claude Juncker. Quite a guest list, you may say, uh, and that's because all those countries and many more will benefit hugely from this new tunnel. It's one of the main freight passages of goods and exports uh, for Europe and the aging rail network in the Alps. Uh, is causing problems and costs and also the sheer amount of lorries on the roads is creating uh, pollution. Uh, the BBC's Imogen Folks uh, has been reporting on the construction of the tunnel uh, over the last couple of decades and uh, she joins us uh, now uh, watching uh, the ceremony. I was just saying there, Imogen, um, th this you know, very enjoyable spectacle with dancers and I presume some people that have taken part in the project as well shows just how immensely proud the Swiss are of this tunnel for so many reasons. Yes, they are. I mean, I think we know it's been 20 years in the building. It's cost 12 and a half billion dollars but I think it's it's also a way let's not forget Switzerland is a small country not in the European Union and they are very keen to show what they can do what role they play in Europe as this linchpin between the north and the south that they can build this really high-tech tunnel the world's longest and deepest and they really are exploiting this day but in a rather nice way to show us all what it took to show us some of the history to show off the tunnel 
And so far, they're succeeding. As you say, uh, Europe's leaders are here basically to a man and woman, and very shortly, they are going to get into one of the first trains through the tunnel and have an even closer look for themselves. And just tell us a bit more about the tunnel, Imogen, because you're, you're going to be uh, among the first passengers as well, I understand, and that must be quite a moment for you because you've been reporting on the construction of this for some time now, and it hasn't always been easy, and it hasn't always been cheap, has it, to, to, to build this tunnel? No, it hasn't. I mean, I think one thing that some people outside of Switzerland don't know is that uh, the Swiss taxpayers actually approved the cost of this tunnel, paying for it, in a referendum. So they have paid for it themselves. They wanted it for the environment. As you say, 20 years, immense change, I think, what I'm going to see in the next hour or so from what I saw a few years ago down at the rock face. Now, a completed tunnel, high-tech, the fastest and the longest. Imogen, folks, many thanks. More from the Alps shortly. Don't go away.